From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Main Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hero Media Arts, connecting small business with new customers. And by Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Now, from the Woodshed Studios at KCC Headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me as always, Ryan Eldridge, Maggie Morrill. Hey guys. Our Hello. guest today is John Beaupre, a longtime Sugarloaf resident, old time friend of Ryan. So it'd be fun to talk to him, see here some of his sports stories. You can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our online store at shop.kennebeccabincompany.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber, the official building material supplier of the Kennebec Cabin Company, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Hero Media Network, and Kennebec Savings Bank. Nailed it. Nailed it. How's everyone doing today? Good. A little bit of winter out there. A little messy. Yeah, for like so pathetic, five isn't hours. It? But then rain. And it's like 45 degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again. Yesterday morning was the coldest morning of the year. I picked Doug up. My, I had the old my old truck. Wouldn't start. There's one thing. You forget the cold, you just fight it. Yep. The river was just starting to button up a little bit. I know. Ice, yeah, lakes were icing over. Everything was looking good. Ugh. No such luck. We jinxed it. Yep. As long as it doesn't all come in April and May, I'll be fine. It's yeah. That you know, as soon as we're all, we're like, all right, we're in the clear. Warm Not weather's so coming. Much. It's gonna hit us hard. But you're skiing. Sort of. Yep, so a little bit. She had a race at Saddleback. Mm -hmm. Do they have full coverage up? I haven't even been north. Of, I think I've been they're north. like sixty percent open or something like that. And they're they're blasting away, you know, with trying to take advantage of the cold weather. So For I now. I drove Betsy up. How many kids you have with you? Yeah, uh, eleven, including Maggie. That's good. On the way up, and I felt bad bugging you that morning and i was like thinking there's not service any of there and i was just like having a i wasn't having a meltdown i was like oh my god I said, somebody just i don't know the answers i literally had to go in there after, like three hours later so yeah i i was there and i thought i was helping by just going and picking everything out because there were specific sink tops we needed so i'm like i'll just get them i'll buy them i'll set them aside and i was talking to the guy he took me you know check me out and everything He's like, no, I'll set these out back. I was like, Corbin and Doug will be there in the morning to pick them up. I was like, great. Did not go well. <laughs> and and no, no, no offense to them either. You know, it's like no good deed goes unpunished. Course, and they were course. changing shifts. And they've, apparently at Lowe's is two computer systems. But I am I was on there talking them through everything, this and that. Gosh. And they, I go to Kern Sale yeah. thinking they're getting everything. They pull in, couldn't find it. So I drove in there walked up luckily like they know us they they let us walk out back and do stuff like that but, oh yeah 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 but i do know the problem so good there's two systems yeah and on yeah on the drive up maggie was my texter so i wasn't texting and driving and I, oh i was very safe maggie asked me a question about the pickles at oh, yeah. the woodshed I, I, we, and, we, it's come up multiple times it was someone in my english class birthday today and they were like for my birthday find out what they are and so i was like okay find out what brand pickles the woodshed has i'm yeah. i'm texting them down there right now <laughs> we will find out are they good pickles i yeah i guess they really like them <laughs> they're asking the woodshed c comes up multiple times during my english class sometimes so does that mean we're hip no <laughs> <laughs> you're just in manchester and close eva came into manchester to hang out with some friends and they were just walking around and so she came over to the woodshed had some had a snack. She's like, put it on my dad's tab. I love it. <laughs> I love it. What? How cool is that? Fletch has been. I mean, Fletch has been doing oh, yeah, it for yeah, two yeah, years. Yeah. I, I've come in before, and this Fletch is sitting at the bar over there, having, oh, yeah. having whatever he wants. Yeah, it's like, poutine. His drink loves it. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, it's funny. I'm putting this down. Woodshed pickles. Maybe maybe we can score on this one. Yeah, because we're batting about five hundred on our. Bone a friend. It's all right. We'll get there. But yeah, no, everything's Kearns Hill is it's there. Appliances are in, goes on the market tomorrow. So, and if people don't know Kearns Hill, it was like we tried something new. Yeah. Kind of like a spec house. I mean, that's exactly spec house duplex. But right. the, I mean, the thing that sold us is literally you could, someone could drive a golf ball to it. It's 20 seconds away. Yeah. And it's, I've always thought we needed a project 
that we that was always there that didn't have a timeline, but but had a budget and that we could send people to us. So we didn't have rain days, you know, because people want yep. want to get their hours. And th this was good, but we never got into a, a new construction tire because you'd never get into a oh, zone. What? Yeah, you know, building a house is a whole different ball game. And we're not known for our use of perfect plans either. <laughs> We know. Don't worry. But you know what? We did it. It's going to be okay. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> don't think we might not be in the. Who knows? We might. Who? Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Who, who knows? knows? Another funny story though is so the Craig episode just aired, and I was talking to Rodney. Rodney's on a project, you know, a side project, and they're just getting ready for flooring. And so when Rodney was working on the Craig camp, they oh. they needed flooring. <laughs> so I went to Martin's and I bought. You know, it's beautiful birch flooring, eight inch wide. You know, I thought I was helping buying six inch wide flooring, but it was nothing longer, you know, nothing longer than 18 inch pieces. So it was a, so much extra work. It's a flooring installer's nightmare. Yeah. And Rodney, oh, he almost walked off the job on that one. We've put Rodney to the test a yep. couple of times. But it came out beautifully. It looked, you know, people loved it on the, you know, great Everyone's going to be doing it across the country now. Yeah. So he's getting <laughs> close to doing the next floor. And I was just at Martin's recently and they had even smaller flooring. It was two and a quarter inches wide by like 12 inches oh, long. He'll, he'll kill you. And I was like, I can't do that. To he'll him. kill you. But because <laughs> when you do hybrid flooring, normally the rules are you don't, you don't want to see them within six, six inches, six right? Inches, yeah. That goes out the window. It does. It but it's does. a camp and it was value. Yeah. And it, it did it. It came out great. It looks awesome. And yeah, Lisa Craig's very happy. And it was, that was a good episode. It was a good episode. And it was a very heart. Heartfelt. Yeah, and heartfelt. I was psyched to see you know that and we got some information about the lake and protecting the waters. Like it was really good. Yeah. Working with a uh, youth conservation corps. They're also well, friends of Cobb Sea Watershed. And they made me look like a wimp. <laughs> kid, those kids know how to work. <laughs> it's one like as this this whole thing we have has evolved, it's neat to see like stuff like that come up and be able to use this as a voice for stuff to help oh, yeah. with the mill on the lake and absolutely you know, help little organizations like you know, John's coming in and he's worked with the Alphonse. Yep. And stuff like that. And I mean, honestly, that camp was, I mean, the lake was underneath. Under it. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. The location. And it used to be the Folsom's Sport. summer camp. Summer camp. And so I no relation to Francis that we know, but there's there's plenty of Folsom's around. Somebody was telling us, oh, Schmidt's father used to spend lots of time at that camp. Really? Yeah. Because they live a little further down on Miranda Cook. That's Reedfield. Reedfield's son. Yes, on the yeah. Redfield side. Nice spot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to take a little break um, after this nice little video about Kennebec Cabin Company. And when we get back, we'll be with our new guest, John Beaupre. Oh, what a feeling. Putting a pine on the ceiling. We really burned through this pile. That was over 4,000 lineal feet of eastern white pine. Yeah, I mean, this it's such a versatile wood. I mean, we've used it for the ceiling with whitewashed. We did the center bead with wainscoting. v mats for sheathing. Yeah. We'll, we'll rip up whatever's left for trim. We'll use it for flooring, siding. You know, where else can you get three different uses out of one board or four different uses, you know? I mean, yeah, this is perfect. It, this is one, one small product, but we've been able to use it in so many different ways. It's really a versatile wood. And it's all sourced from Maine and New England. And yeah. Eastern white pine. Sustainably harvested. We like to say throw the pine at it. We do that a lot. So now it's throw the eastern white pine at it. Trademark pending. Trademark pending. <laughs> throw it. Thanks, Melma. All right. And we are back with our guest, John Beaupre. John, how are you? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, John, Thanks for having going? me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming down today. We know it's not the best travel weather, but we're used to it. He's a sugar lover. He can drive in that. <laughs> and oh, by the way, my wife lives in Portland. So I've done this commute uh, thousands and thousands of times. So it was right in my wheelhouse. And let's just get that get this out of the way. Your wife is from, drum roll. Uh, my wife, uh, reluctant to say, is a Coney grad. Hey, like, like some of the people all around right. here. So <laughs> I, think... I, I am a Waterville High School guy, and I married a Coney Ram. I still haven't quite figured out how it happened. But like the Coney Rams here in this uh, in this room, she's a lovely woman, and I'm glad that I married her. I'm yeah. a lucky man. When we met, I think we were both single or dating other people, and maybe that's I knew we always had a lot in common. Yeah. Who knew we'd end up with a gust of women? Well, we won the marital lottery, didn't we? <laughs> we, we sure Even did. though they're coney chicks, but we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> well, uh, this is our shoot the shit um, segment. So we always offer coffee, water, beer. And um, I was thinking on the way down um, that 
There's a lot, I've known you for a long time. You've been a big mentor. And so I'm just going to offer you coffee and water. Yeah. Which one would you like? I would love a water, please. Perfect. We don't have any coffee. And as you know, uh, you know, my beer drinking days are, are in the past. Uh, I, right. had a, I had a legendary career in a legendary drinking town, but uh, now I think I'm going to stick to water. But I was thinking like all the things that I'm <laughs> so impressed by what you've done. And that's one of, you know, you chose that road um, and you've done it well for a long time. And you're a great example for many people. It's a bit of a miraculous journey. I, I'm now eight and a half years sober. And, uh, you know, to own liquor stores, which is my occupation, and uh, living in a drinking community. And, uh, you know, frankly, all my friends are, are big drinkers. It's, uh, it's a miraculous journey that I'm kind of proud of. And, uh, you know, I, I, I walk the walk. And if I can help someone who struggles, then it's, uh, you know, it just makes it all that much better. I'm, I'm a fortunate and grateful yeah. man. So thanks, Ryan. We, Those are nice words. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And tell everyone a little bit more about yourself. You're from Sugarloaf and how we've all been working together on a couple of things and yeah. what's going on. So uh, I landed in Carabasset Valley in 1989. I bought a landmark store called Ayat's, which is still a, a, a legendary <laughs> still fixture. There. And that is how you say it. Ayat is how his he called it. His name was Dick Ayat, and he called it Ayat. So we just kind of ran with it. Not a yup. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people say, "Is it Ayats? Is it Ayats?" I call it Ayats. Uh, I uh, then built a second store at the Gateway to Sugarloaf uh, in 1995. I we we I have a partner. His name is Bob Thomas. Uh, we took over Sugarloaf Groceries in 2001. And then in 2009, we bought Annie's Market in Kingfield. So I've been a proud proprietor for 34 years. Uh, recently, I I um, I sold three of my stores and um, easing my way into the world of semi retirement. Yeah, but, congratulations! You know, in and amongst there. I'm lucky enough to have thousands and thousands of friends like you, like Matty Dix. And <laughs> right? uh, I call him Matty Dix. I know he's Dixie oh, yeah. to your to your fans. And the last person I saw before I jumped in my car this afternoon was Matty Dix on my way out. <laughs> so we had a nice hug and embrace. He filled me in on our history. So Matty <laughs> wrote- Matty Of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> in his enthusiastic manner. Oh, yeah. So Matty, I, I met first of all of you five. Uh, he moved up there in 1992. Okay, yeah, a few okay. years before me. And then he told me that you moved up in 1995. Correct. So we've been friends for, what's that in math? 27, 27 years. 28 years, now it's 2023. Wow. And then I got to meet Ashley as you started dating you know? and courting and then marrying ha, her. Courting. Ha, how do you like that? Courting, honey? you like that? <laughs> and uh, she worked in the Sugarloaf community. So, you know, we all worked in the <laughs> hospitality industry and we've become fast friends. Uh, Jared, the funny part about Jared, I call him Jared. I know he's Jedi to your fans. Uh, his uncle Greg was our grocery delivery driver for like a decade. So then I got to know Jared in that, uh, in that frame. And then Chase, I've been privileged to get to know you over the last six to 12 months. Cause we yeah, right, did right, a great right. celebrity event together, which I suppose we could talk about in a couple minutes. Yeah. That was a fun event. And that's something you had been doing for a long time. Tell us more about the um, Celebrity Cra Classic. So uh, my mom died uh, tragically about nine years ago, and I wanted to, to uh, um, you know, celebrate her life in a manner. And uh, being from Waterville, Maine, there's, a, there's an organization in Waterville called the Alphon Youth Center. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of the greatest youth organizations yes. in our whole country. Uh, those of us Mainers know the Alphon name carries some clout. So they were doing a grassroots effort to start some gardening facilities. And they said, hey, John, would you like to uh, to uh, join forces and build a uh, sustainable gardening facility, which we all get behind? And uh, they said, you know, maybe we can do it in your mom's memory, which just right in my wheelhouse. You know, we all would love our parents right. and love to honor our parents. And uh, so seven years ago, we did our first event called the Maine Celebrity Classic. And uh, I did it at Sugarloaf, our beloved Sugarloaf. And I invited uh, Bruins and Red Sox. Let's see, Steve Nelson, Hall of Fame linebacker for the Patriots, Seth Westcott, our two-time gold medalist, who's great friends with yeah. all of us. Uh, Keith Folk, who uh, threw out the last pitch of the 2000. Uh, he was here with us again this summer. So uh, we raised... In the last, so we did four main celebrity classics at Sugarloaf. We raised about a half a million dollars. Wow. And uh, we built the facility. We cut the ribbon three or four years ago. It's called the Mary Beaupre Sustainable Gardening Facility, and it's adjacent to the Alphon Youth Center. And it's the proudest thing I've ever done. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. And, you know, we all get behind community. We all get behind children and families. You guys do. I know mm -hmm. that. And uh, so we did a couple years off during a certain pandemic. And then uh, you and I and Jen Reed, 
Elise, your right hand lady, we uh, said that maybe we could do a fifth event and uh, we had a blast, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a great time and great turnout. Yeah. yeah. One of the um, things that made, has made me the proudest about the woodshed is seeing the influence from Sugarloaf. You know, I was up there for a long time in the food and beverage industry. Dixie was up there. And we've had some people come down here to help us, but we've seen many people just passing through to come in and support us. Yeah. yeah and, a lot know, of familiar faces. I've watched you guys build this out back for the last, you know, three, four years. And it started as a grassroots effort. And now you have Cole, who's a, a great friend of all of us. He's a Sugarloafer and now is running your place like a finely tuned machine. I love stopping. I, mean, I encourage your friends and guests and Mainas to come uh, come down here. It's it's a great atmosphere. You guys have created a, a finely tuned machine with a great staff. They're all friendly and fun. So it definitely takes a village. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes a whole state. So, and you brought up the Alphon family. Um, maybe a lot of people don't know about the Alphons. He started out in the shoe industry, correct? I mean, yeah, he uh, was the owner of Dexter Shoe. Uh, Dexter, probably one of the. Best philanthropist in the world, in the states. I mean, what he has done for the state is amazing. Well, his claim to fame is he sold it to Warren Buffett, and he they say that he kind of bamboozled him that he got this massive price tag that wasn't really the the worth. But the good news is he took Berkshire Hathaway stock as a compensation for Dexter right. Shoe, which has grown exponentially over the years, and it turned into billions and billions of dollars, and has wow. become the, probably the biggest philanthropic vehicle in the state of Maine. Yeah, I'd and, say. Uh, it's, you know, it's it, every child that's born in the state of Maine gets a $500 um, uh, savings bond, savings or bond like toward that. college. Yeah. 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 It's start. Yeah. It's a way to kick off. You yeah. with four children probably know better about that than us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's good on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the Dexter shoes, were, weren't they the old log cabins? Yeah. Is that what they were? You got it. Yeah. 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 They were all over the state. So, you know, the Alphon presence, I'm privileged and honored to have been benefited from being friends with the Alphon family and, and that great facility. And, you know, it's it's just a great way to give back to the communities that have been great to us. You know, you're Hollowell Gardner, Augusta guys. I'm a Waterville guy. It's it's cool to give back to our communities. I know you guys are yeah. great yeah, about that. Sure. It means a lot. Yeah. Do you still have family in Waterville? Uh, no, my parents are gone now, yeah. but uh, I have great deep roots. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, we're all central Mainers. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Central Mainers There's, love Central right. Mainers. It's quite a bond between Jen, Central Mainers. Jen's Winslow. Win yeah, Winslow. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's quite a bit younger than us, isn't she? A little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I remember I met her at um at Sugarloaf. And I must say that you just told me she intimidates you. That's awesome because I've seen her do that to many grown men because she's good at her job and she gets she gets the job done. Now, when I use the word intimidate in a loving and respectful manner, she is just a doer. Oh, yeah. She in does a not mess around. Manner, yes. And I yes. have nothing but respect. Intimidate was a little bit of a friendly uh, poke at myself. <laughs> che, che, it took you a long time. like Of course. Yeah. Of course. But we're there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, after you, you're full time up to Sugarloaf. I live in Carabasset Valley, Maine. Uh, yeah. I've been there 35 years. Um, my wife lives in Portland, Maine. That's one of the great secrets to our wildly successful marriage. <laughs> uh, I love Portland, Maine. And uh, and then we just recently uh, bought a, a, a home in Florida, which I'm slowly digesting the fact that I might be a Floridian at one day. I didn't think I'd ever be a Florida guy. Uh, Doesn't every man go through that usually? Like maybe in your 60s or something. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in my 60s, so I guess I qualify, right? What part of Florida? It's called New Smyrna Beach, Florida. It's lovely. I guarantee Dixie knew that where that was and knew like the best bar. And <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Probably. Best, best fishing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so a uh, couple of interesting things about you is that you have quite a collection. Uh, I'm a passionate sports fan. It's it's borderline maniacal. Um, I, I have one of the biggest uh, sports memorabilia collections in the state of Maine. I'm assuming it's just out of control. It's massive. You, you walk into John's house and it's just Sports Illustrated covers, base everything you can say, see or, or think of everywhere. Covered, covered, covered. During COVID, I got a chance to neaten it up, and it's it's now four rooms full, and it's cataloged, and it's neat, and it's orderly. And when people come in and do a tour, they say, "Boy, this looks just like a store." And for a storekeeper, right. you know, you couldn't come up with a <laughs> better compliment like, you got your scanner that. and your stickers on the back <laughs> and, and uh, uh, uh it, yeah it's it it's a priceless collection just doubling back to yours and my friendship um i just want to touch on this for just a second is you sir were granted the opportunity of a lifetime to throw out the first pitch at fenway park yes if ashley's not 
listening. It was the greatest day of my life. If she is listening, it was my second greatest day of my life. <laughs> right. And do you mind if I share no, our no, personal not, not story? Not so Ryan threw out the first pitch at Fenway Park on September 22nd. And I know that because of a certain gesture this great man shared with me. Um, my daughter moved home in November to Sugarloaf to uh, work and live with me. And uh, some night in November, uh, the Cabin Masters were filming episodes up in Stratton. And uh, there was a cast party up at the Stratton Plaza. So I told my daughter, I said, hey, I'm friends with these guys. Why don't you come on up with me and we'll meet some of the locals and, and watch the shenanigans. And uh, so we walked up and I walked to the door and sure enough, we knew just about everybody in the place. And uh, this great man, Ryan, came up to me. He goes, Bopre, I have a I have a gift for you. And I'm like, I don't want any gifts from you. You know, we're, we're <laughs> I don't want you got in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. And this wonderful man, uh, I happen to have it with uh, me. Oh, oh, wow. Um gifted me i don't know if oh look at that hey hold up Gift, hold yeah you hold it up so uh what i'm holding up just for the people who can't see us right now uh is the actual ball that ryan eldridge threw out at fenway park and i signed it look at that and he <laughs> legibly gave it to me <laughs> as a, a gift of our friendship and i frankly i'm i'm manly enough to admit that i cried oh because it was such i a, was a little emotional too because you know my nephew fletcher was was with me, but he got all, everyone was giving him balls, you know? And like, so he, you know, and then I couldn't, you were the only person that came to mind and I wanted you to have it because I knew you would appreciate it. Oh, well, it's, it's here for a reason. Yeah, and it wouldn't end up in a Black Lab's mouth somewhere. <laughs> no, so, so it's funny you say that. So my wife has ground rules about my collection because it's so massive and out of control. She goes, John, will you please not have stuff in the living room, right? So she's a lovely woman, as you know. This ball sits in oh, the living room. Yes. Up on the mantle. I feel where, very honored. <laughs> because it's so uh, near and dear special to me as a fan and a friend. And, you know, the symbolic gesture of you. Oh, uh, don't make me tear up here, Jesus. <laughs> well, I know. I'm, believe me, I'm struggling with it, too. So when he gave it to me, you know, because I love autographs and stuff, I looked at him dead in the eye. I said, Ryan, you know the first question I'm going to ask you. He said, yeah. He goes, yeah, John, I'll sign it for you. <laughs> so it is signed and dated. And. A great piece of memorabilia that I hold near and dear to my heart. Thank and it was much. almost a strike. <laughs> it was a good pitch. You brought some heat. I'm not an athlete. <laughs> you did great. So that that's uh, a great piece of memorabilia. And uh, if something happens to me, I'll give it to you and your nephew, okay? <laughs> I love it. And I love you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how much... Um, opportunity we've got the show's given us and then sports like how much fun fletcher and i've had and, you know chase and i and then bringing the guys down there absolutely it's like, it's, it's, it's very we're very very lucky it's very amazing yep. and then you have one other pretty cool hobby you're working on as well you're, you're trying to do something that not many people have done uh, uh i'm assuming my With tour sports, the stadiums yes. yeah yep. so before I pass away, I'm trying to hit every single stadium and arena for all four major sports. Not one, not not one, which most people do. Chase is looking at me like I'm insane, <laughs> and you're right, I'm insane. Really? So I'm done baseball. I've hit every single park for every single major league team. Um, I have two left for the NFL. I have Seattle. And San Francisco left, so I've knocked out 30 out of 32. I should get those. That's done. one trip, though. You did that right. You can go. You I'll get those right. next fall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hockey and basketball, because of my career at Sugarloaf, I was a very winter-oriented businessman, so it was hard to get away in the winter. I have probably 10 left of the NHL and the NBA. Uh, I, I share my story with people when I go to games, and they, I said, yeah, I've got 100. And I just did number 117, 118, and 119 last week. I did Oklahoma City, Dallas, and San Antonio with the Celtics. And uh, I tell people my journey, and they're like, you are insane. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It, it's just, it's a great way to see our great country. Yeah. It's a great way to meet fabulous people, uh, and I have a blast. And following you on social media, you're not just going to the games. You're going to see the cool stuff, the yeah. museums. See and, our country. You know, eat tons of great food. Yeah. Yeah. Meet people. Meet people. That's yeah. awesome. Are you going for specific games or just... There's been no rhyme or reason behind it. Yeah. I, 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 uh, my best friend is Mike Runcer. He owns Valley Beverages, and uh, we've been best friends since Fourth Gate. And we challenge each other to knock out stadium after stadium. And, yeah. Uh, we try to tie in cultural things mm -hmm. to make it more meaningful. My wife goes to about maybe a third of the 
the uh, road trips with me because she can only handle so much of me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool. It's it's. I'm very very fortunate and grateful. I don't mean to sound braggy, but it's it's been a really fun uh, adventure. Well, when you complete that, we want to we're gonna have to have you back here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, that's funny you say that, Brian. Uh, one of our guests at our our uh, fundraiser this summer was Senator Angus King. How wasn't that great when he showed up? <laughs> I mean, it was real. I got a funny story. <laughs> okay. Well, so anyways, it, it, Senator King, I told him of my, my journey. He goes, when you finish, John, I want to do an official proclamation. Or, you know, I was, right. <laughs> really? <laughs> anyway, I want to hear your story about. Oh, well, we were work that day of the event. We were out back helping park cars, checking what's going on. He pulls in and, oh, hey guys, blah, blah, blah. blah and looks at this. You got, you guys are more popular than that. Warden show, you know that I go. I'm going to be honest with you. I know that I was going to be on TV. And if I was, I was going to be on the wrong end of that Warren show. <laughs> <laughs> and he was dying laughing. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to talk about politics because, but he is a wonderful friend and a wonderful man. Yeah. Chase has had a meeting with him. Yeah. 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 And how did it go? Good. He's got plans for his condo up Sugarloaf that he's looking to uh, get some work done. So we're looking into the possibility of doing that. Well, he called me that morning and asked, me to <laughs> put in a good word it all comes full circle <laughs> and i he wouldn't share with me the details but anytime a united states senator asks us to uh chat it's usually catches our right. attention right exactly it? exactly and he's just a nice nice man another great manor another great manor yeah loves to ski so you gotta really appreciate that yeah. one of my stores is right in the village one of my former stores right in the village and their condo was right upstairs literally yeah so mary and angus are in like two or three times a day <laughs> they're just so friendly and fun and charming and you know, yeah. all that stuff it is amazing like maine is just part of the main reason the big reason why the show is successful because people are approachable you know i, I don't know if it's because it's just the geography but like you know you, you you can you can see Angus King out here. You can meet so and so. You can hang out with us here, and it does. It make it makes it, it makes us. I think special and this place very special. Well, part of your success is, is your humility. You guys, uh, you know, I know you as friends, not as I am a fan, but I'm a friend first and foremost. And you know, I know how genuine you are. I know how approachable you are. I know how humble you are. I know how you, grateful you guys are for your meteoric success. You know, you guys are probably the last ones to think this was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, your work ethic i i, I just I, I, bravo well thank you yeah thank you so what's going on um with the any plans the celebrity classic i know you're up in the air but this, alphonse is still doing a lot of fundraising and a lot of things. Uh, yeah I, I think it's up to me and you guys if we want to do another one i i think if we were going to do it again i think we'd scale it back to maybe just a lobster bake and yeah. some music that one was we're, we're still trying to learn our identity and we're we, we're doing too much we're trying to figure out what to do, you know, with our summer. And let's face it, we want to spend a little time in the summer and it, it's crazy right now. It's a fine line between, you working. know, working and our commitments. And oh the, yeah, absolutely. And, and just mental health, really. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, you guys being quote unquote superstars, you know, you've, you've really quote, lost unquote, quote unquote, <laughs> you know, you've lost a lot of your, your privacy and, and your uh, ability to go out in public. And, you know, I'm sure you, you seek some relaxation and some private time much we, deserved, might I add. We have. So do you prefer, speaking of private, do you prefer care Bassett in the summer or winter time? Oh, that's a good question. Um, uh, well, in the winter, I worked a hundred hours a week and I was a well, walking. Right, 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 right. So I love the summer. Gotcha. Love Everyone it. used to say that summers, they come for the winter and they stay for the summer. You know, Ryan, <laughs> you and I know, cause you got there in the early nineties and I got there in the late eighties. When I first got there, it was a sleepy little town. And in the summer, there was tumbleweeds going up yeah. and down Route 27. And now it's a four season, vibrant, healthy year round community, which is we as pioneers wanted to see. And now it's become to fruition. Yeah. So, and the mountain, mountain biking has taken off. The so, mountain biking, so many different reasons. The mountain biking program is one of the best in the nation. Yeah. You know, we're, we're bringing in people. We hosted, um, what is it called? It's like the World Series of Downhill Mountain Biking this year. What is it called? It's the World Cup. And we hosted it at Sugarloaf. There were people from Scotland and New Zealand, and it was. Oh yeah, I think we were working up there, and it was. Yeah, you guys were. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And we saw yeah, all the prep and everything going into getting it ready. I mean, that just shows you how much our community has evolved from a sleepy little summer town to hosting a world That's cup mountain bike race, and we were busy as hell. I mean, That's awesome. we, we were getting our butts handed to us on a summer weekend. Awesome. It, was, it was great. And then the marathon, like that's been going on for a long time. That got held off because of the uh, pandemic. pandemic. We didn't have it for a couple, three years. I feel so. like it was like Bob Ash and Josh Tosis for 30 years trying to get mountain biking. And they did it. 
You know what? I, it's funny you Grass say Grassroots. I was giving those two props in my story yesterday about the the success of the Mountain Pride Cup. Those two guys were the pioneers. Mm -hmm. Bob Ash would sit up in the outdoor center and, you know, fix chains and give directions. And, and uh, it, people like that, like you guys, when you started your career, it was a simple formula with hard work and right. all that. And it evolved into what it is today. That's how our, our Got to put the time in. And That's the work the and the yeah. and the perseverance. Yeah. Well, yeah. And this great organization. We did some work for the, well, not, oh, that episode hasn't aired yet, but we did some work with the Adaptive Outdoor Education Center at their Brunswick campus. Yeah, I know. But they've got a good sized campus up in that area. We what did some work. Great for people. The, uh, main, out main Outing Club up. <laughs> that out Tucked in Have up you there. been there, the Outing Club? I'm behind. a humane graduate, so of course I have. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember going I there. I may have visited it once or twice in my college career. I remember going there once or twice. I don't, remember much and like i thought maybe because i had too much to drink but then uh they explained it like you leave orono and at four in the winter so you get there at seven or eight and dark out you know and then you make a fire you go do your thing you come back pass yeah. out and you wake up and you hit the mountain you know and you just go 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 but that's because we could because you could yes. yes that was quite a place hey chase i want you to hear you evolve on uh, uh bruce albertson in the main adaptive um i, I kind of sort of introduce Bruce to you guys and and why don't you talk about what they do I think it's important it's amazing what they've done yeah so they do I mean not just physical disabilities but all levels of disabilities get in mm. started out with skiing and getting people out on the slopes and now it's it's you name it they're doing it I mean they're sailing they've got programs up in the Sugarloaf area they've got a campus down in Brunswick area and we did a project with them for an episode that's going to air, hopefully, I think in a couple of weeks. Yep. So really cool project. Really cool project, and yeah, they're just great. And Bruce and Anne Marie Alveson. I want to give them a plug if if we. Yeah, of, of course. course. Of course. Yes. They started this in Carabasa Valley. We deeded them land for a dollar, whatever yep. it was, because we oh. knew what they wanted was so darn special and important. Yep. And they built the facility, and whenever I go there, it brings me to tears because the, the the thing that's so important to to. Uh, emphasize here they built those with their own money yes and you know they, now are they getting grants and funding yes they are but they did this out of it's on the um outdoor center road is that correct correct yeah and um john's a selectman too so when you say like you had a big part in well town politics and stuff i just introduced and, yeah. and it's important i left there i couldn't believe in the they haven't been along around that long maybe 15 yeah it's a short but what they've accomplished in a short time is just amazing <laughs> It's, it, it, they don't like notoriety or public, but I think it's important for us to, to, to make people understand that is such an amazing gesture and journey that, that Bruce and Anne Marie have done. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I haven't been to the Brunswick campus, but I bet. Oh, you're going to, you're going to want to. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's putting every, everyone on the same playing field, you know, giving these people these disabilities that wouldn't get to do the stuff that we do. They're right. They're right in the mix of it. Like everything from sailing and mountain biking and cl rock Fishing. climbing. Like, yeah. Ashley did a couple of projects with some of them and they, they were just the greatest people people that we had such a blast laughing and, and it's a good it's a good episode and, and you know their their clientele is is nothing but uh appreciative and grateful mm -hmm. for the facilities and the opportunities yeah. and it, it's so heartwarming and and i just am proud of bruce and amory for doing that and i'm so glad that you guys got to team up with them that's yeah. that's really cool. i can't wait to see the episode and i don't think i ever said it right it's the it's an acronym is that aoec Adaptive, Adaptive Outdoor, Outdoor Education, Education Center. Center. It's took amazing. Me, it took me saying it 50 times. And they have a website, guys. Check it out. And there is an awesome episode coming. We can't, we got to stop talking because I'm going to give away too much. But it, <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, it is awesome. <laughs> also, it's a mutual friend and something that yeah. we mutually respect. And I think it's good that we gave him a little uh, for shout sure, out. For so, sure. And I'm glad that you guys got to help yeah. him. That's All great. right. So we do have a few fan questions that Maggie will uh, ask you. Correct. These are always great. All right. Are you ready? I am. Okay. This one is from at Sunny123. We hear you're a big sports fan. What is your favorite team to see play? Well, that's an easy one. It's it's all four of the New England sports. If I had to pick one, it's probably the Red Sox because I've been fans. And I know you and I share that. And by the way, if I could jump on that, Ryan and I share our, our same favorite player in the history of the Boston Red Sox, right? Number 14. Kevin Millar. 
No, no, no. no. Jim Rice. <laughs> Jim Rice. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Kevin Millar. Jesus, is... we should have had some prep time no. together. <laughs> I, I do love Jim Rice. Kevin Millar is up there, though. I, I just always loved him. I'm playing golf with him this summer. I am not. Nice. Yeah. I said hi. So to answer the question, it would be the Boston Red Sox, <laughs> New England Patriots, Boston Bruins, and Boston Celtics. Not that you okay. want to know. And you've done a few events with Jedi with the Bruins. Yeah. So that's funny. Yeah, it's great. So um, I have become friends with some of the Bruins alumni. They came here. To yeah, our right, events. right, right. Let's see, who was here? Terry O'Reilly, um, uh, Dave Jensen. The president of the Bruins Alumni Association is Frank Simonetti. And we've become really good friends since he's a great guy. And oh, by the way, he's the head of the Bruins alumni. So we have good connections, right? <laughs> So uh, they were doing a uh, Bowling with Bruins event. And as we know, Jedi is a huge hockey fan. Huge hockey fan. Jared. And he used to be a goaltender. Yeah. So I asked, I said, Jared, do you want to go with me? And he He was so happy and honored. And uh, one of your crew members came with us. uh, Jabo? Jason. Yeah, Jason Thornton. Yeah, he yeah. came with us, too. He was on our team. Oh, nice. And he was like me. He he was not starstruck, but excited to meet. There was some Hall of Famers there. Uh, we sucked at bowling, but we had a freaking <laughs> blast. It was good. So, yes, I meant to talk about that. And Jared and I have become fast friends. He's such a good man. And uh, we had a blast. It's nice. neat to see, like, people, they use this, the still notoriety and, you know, the energy and the fame and the whole idea of the sports to get still get people together even if they played decades later you know all for charity of a good causes yeah it was funny when when they found out i was inviting jared i I don't look at you guys as celebrities no offense but they said (laughs) i i I love you guys and i'm proud of your celebrity status with this so they made him wear a celebrity bowling jersey he goes i didn't want to do this i said just go with it just go with it just roll with it (laughs) so he was warmly received by the uh, bruins fans nice Alrighty, this one is from Stacy uh, Kellogg. Sure. <laughs> Out of all the famous athletes you've ever ever met, have you ever been starstruck by one? And if so, who? Well, I, I can answer that one pretty quickly. I got a chance. My friend Mike Runcer, who I alluded to earlier, we won. He won a chance to go down and meet Arnold Palmer. <laughs> So this was eight, nine, 10 years ago. I said, he goes, do you want to go? And uh, that was the dumbest question everyone could have asked me. Right. I said, yeah, darn right, I want to go. Uh, so I said, Mike, what is this? Is it going to be a convention and we're going to get like a two second picture? He goes, yeah, probably. And I said, well, let's go. And we went down and uh, it turned out there was only like 16 of us there. And we spent three days and two nights with Mr. Palmer. Oh, wow. wow. We had dinner and cocktails. Uh, we toured his home. <laughs> We sat in his office for a Q and A about as big as this room right here. Um, uh, then he we, he he has a world famous memorabilia barn in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. That's where Mr. Palmer's from, and uh, and he he still lives there. Loves his hometown. Well, he's passed away now. Yeah, but, he did still live there. Yeah, but yeah. that was his roots, and uh, he owned the golf. But did he anyway, drink Rolling Rock. He drank. Uh, I know this kettle one and tonic, because he had not one or two l- too many. Not lemonade, nice tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's his. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's why we went. I Arizona. do love an Arnold. I do love an Arnold. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, Mike won a. Uh, yeah, uh, contest, contest, yeah. and uh, that's why we went. So, anyways, Mr. Arnold Palmer, I got the pleasure to meet. Yes, I was incredibly starstruck when he first walked in the room, but then we got to spend a lot of time with him, and it got comfortable. So very cool. It's that yeah. first time. Yeah. yeah, I have great pictures. He signed our pictures. He signed uh, three or four Sugarloaf golf flags for me, pin flags. So that's I have cool. those in my uh, my collection. A golfer, huh? Who would have thought that? <laughs> <laughs> John Daly would be my second. I love <laughs> John Daly. We got to meet him too. Not as starstruck because he's kind of a lunatic. Right. <laughs> nice. Did I answer okay? I think Any so. Any more questions? That is all we have time for today. Well, John, that was fun to learn a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I can't thank you guys enough for having me come down. I, I'm a fan and a friend. Well, thank you very much. We'll continue. And if you're in the Sugarloaf area, stop by your store, Annie's. Annie's Market in Kingfield, Maine. I still own that, and it's a bustling little market. As a matter of fact, the last person I saw when I jumped in my car to come do the podcast with you guys today was? Matty Dix. Matty Dix. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a hug from a cabin master, and he wished me doing well. Doing the circuit. Oh, yeah, doing, doing the, the circuit. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's... Yeah, good man. <laughs> nice. Well, guys, stick around. Our new favorite segment, which we're spatting about 500 at, is coming up, and we're going to try to phone another fan. All right, so we are back with phone a fan. We tried last week. 
a couple calls, nothing got through. But I guess the story is that we called Pam LeConte and left a message. She called back, left us a message, said she'd love to talk. So, nice. Pam, we're going to try you again. So, on the message boards on social media, they're talking about the voices in the background. The, the late back there, like they know Maggie, but I think they're talking about maybe Jen and maybe Trey's back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Taylor yeah, yeah. back there now. So, there's a, we, it's not. It takes a lot of people to help us out. Oh, yes. And make us look good. <laughs> Kudos to the girls in back. Yes. Oh. I'm scared of from that noise last week. No, she said she fixed it. <laughs> Hello? Hi, is this Pam? Yes, it is. Pam, this is Chase yes. Morrill with Maine Cab Masters. <laughs> Hi, Pam. It's Ryan Hi. as well. <laughs> Hi, Ryan and Chase. How? I was like, almost didn't answer again, but it kind of <laughs> came up as the last kind of call. <laughs> well, hello, guys. <laughs> How are you? Good. Did you get my text message back that I broke my wrist? <laughs> oh, that's what we heard. How are you doing? I know. Well, better, stupid me. I was walking in, just gawking away, looking away, and... Missed the step and fell forward. It, it really hurt. Don't do it. I don't recommend oh, it. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, hopefully you're on the oh, mend. Where? Yeah, yeah. Pam, where are you? I'm on the mend. I'm in my I, I'm at my home in Wisconsin and sitting on the couch right now, <laughs> recovering. <Fantastic>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where are you guys at? In Maine, I'm assuming? <laughs> we are at in our podcast studio right at our headquarters in Manchester, Maine. It's snowing cool. outside. It's probably about, what, in the teens right now? Yeah, it's cold as it's been all yeah. year. We haven't had much of a winter. Oh, yeah. Yet. We haven't either. It's been actually really dry. We're actually balmy. They said our, this is the warmest January we've had in forever in Wisconsin, so the southern part. But, yeah, we have a little snow here and there. But, yeah, it's really crazy. You as never as know. Does... Like you guys, never know what our winters are going to be like it's, anymore. It's true. It's true. As long as it doesn't affect the yeah. cows and that beautiful cheese you guys have, you'd be all set. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> our lovely cheese. <laughs> so how long have you And been... beer and pots. Oh. What All the good that? stuff. Oh, yes, beer, of course. All stuff on my diet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pam, how long have you been watching the show? Um, well, actually, my husband started watching it first, and then I was um, kind of got hooked. And he's an electrician, so he's in uh, construction and all that, too. And and uh, he started watching it. And at first, I'm like, when you guys started calling them um, not cabins, you would call them uh, camps. And I'm like, what in the hell are you watching? Why are they calling them camps? <laughs> and then he's like, that's what they call them. And then so I just got hooked. I just started liking it. And the scenery, and you guys are just silly and goofy and, <laughs> and all that. So I'm like, hey, I, I just he watches it, too, but he's always on his phone while he's watching it. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> we watched, watched one last night again, <laughs> but yeah, but we came out. Do you remember me, Chase? When I, we came out in October, did you see my picture um, that I put in the, the, it's on the screen ahead main, of us, but our eyes, the main cabin, um, friend, the friend, biggest fan or whatever. Friends of main yes, cabin. Were, yes. I do yeah, remember yeah. you were in the, sh you were in the shop and we were, we were just staying in Augusta just minutes from there at the whatever hotel we were at. And we, I came back to get, uh, to stay at the shed and have some beers. And then, uh, I heard you in the, in the back and Jeff saw your truck. He go, I go get Jesus here. I felt like a damn little kid in the, you know, like, Oh my God, Jesus here. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then I'm like, I didn't want to like bother you, but they're like, go out the girls in the shop, go out and say hi to them. I'm like, okay, I will. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're so nice to take a quick little picture, and then we got drunk at the, the shed. <laughs> hey, perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We met Scott and a couple other people. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, had, yeah. And had a really good time. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. So, yep, it was very pretty. The trees were really pretty and colorful. Like everybody kept saying, it was past peak when we were there, but it was plenty, plenty of fall color still. And it was so, a, it was a beautiful fall. It was a really good year. It was, yeah, it was very nice. And we even went to uh, Ryan that bar that you we watch your you know the show. I see your shirts and stuff. The depot. What's that? The depot? Depot. Yeah, we went yeah. to the depot because I'm like, okay, let's go there. And then, but then somebody at the shed said we should have went to another little town, like where the locals the more go. Hollow like the quarry. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Someplace else, I think. We, well, we went to the quarry. I went there. And then there was another little place. But, but anyway, so then we had a little fun trying to meander because here in wisconsin you can't throw a stone without hitting a bar <laughs> and so we like to we like to meander and putz around and stop here and there so perfect but was that otherwise first, so was that your first time to maine yeah yeah and like i said i really never i've always wanted to go out east but since we watched the show and we were gonna go maybe next this next fall because it'll be our 25th wedding anniversary and i'm like let's go on that and then i got thinking we're just sitting here one day watching your show and 
this like in September. And he's like, I go, why don't we just go this year? And Jeff goes, oh, why don't we just go? <laughs> so he <laughs> decided just the last minute, t- take a drive out there. So it was perfect. Yeah. Sometimes that's so maybe the best we'll come way out next it. year again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be here. <laughs> yeah, you'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Not going anywhere. So yeah, it was really nice, nice trip. We went to DC first and then, uh, uh, cause our daughter just graduated high school. So we took her with, nice. and we went to DC to the, that, and then we kind of rode up there and drove around and didn't have any plans, just meandered every day, just take this road and take that road and see where we end up. So how fun. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. We didn't get too far away from, you know, Augusta there and then um, uh, Manchester, because that's, you know, Manchester's where the your shop is, right? Your, Worldwide headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I said that after I said it now. But yeah. Nice. So, yeah, so I'm so glad you called back. I just told my husband last night where I'm watching your show, and I go, they never called me back. Because <laughs> I was so bummed, because you called last week, and Jeff called, and he had my phone while I was in for surgery to have my wrist fixed. And then um, like, I got back, and I got listened to my voicemail, and I go, oh, my God, Jeff. I go, I missed your call. He goes, you're kidding. I go, I did. <laughs> so, yeah. We've have you guys ever a... broke a bone? It's not fun. <laughs> I broke my femur. That was not fun, skiing. Oh, did you have to have surgery, though? I did. I didn't walk for six oh. months. Jeez, yeah. Oh, yeah. Knock on wood, oh, I've been is, fairly lucky. Oh, I you know. I've, I've broken a few like, in my day, but not. This was the first in a long time, but I fell forward and just missed my step walking into Arby's, for God's sake. Oh. I, was, I was stepped I know it was the stupidest thing. We usually go through the drive through and I thought, my husband was on the phone. I thought, I'm just going to go in. And I looked today, looked away, and I missed a step and just biffed it right by the floor and oh. hit my wrist. And the doctor goes, it'll never be the same. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> it, I know. But he, it just means that I probably won't bend it as much. I'm like, so freaking sucks because I like right. putzing around and doing stuff. You just drink, with, drink with your elbow. Drink with your elbow. <laughs> I know, exactly. And luckily, it wasn't my right hand. I said, my drinking hand is still good. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's always that thing. It's like, I always think it too. I was laying there. I'm like, well, we'd rather have broken a foot, broken a foot or an arm because you can at least walk around, but you really need two hands a lot. <laughs> right. Yes. So, yeah. And then when we're at the shed, I like, I keep, I was asking the people, that, the locals that I was talking to, um, what's the drink? I keep forgetting what it was called. There was um, Je- um, Jedi's girlfriend. Dash. They make a. They make a cider. Dash. They make, uh, Dash hard yeah. seltzer. Hard, hard seltzer. Yeah, yeah. And then I try to look it up. It's not, it, it was really good. Um, but it was only, it's only made out there. But I'm like, yeah, that was really good. Cause I, uh, the couple of people, they bought us a drink. We bought them one back. But it was a nice night to sit around the campfire. Nice. That, or the, yeah. It was so. But otherwise, yeah, I was having some fun with those. And that next morning, we were supposed to start heading back, and we were <laughs> kind of hung over, which wasn't a good idea. <laughs> those, those dash yeah. will sneak up on you because they, they so do because they're so good. I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, I know that was a bad thing because I'm like, ooh, but it wasn't bad because it was like all week we're kind of trying to find. You know, we went to the local bars, but it's kind of like we didn't know anybody, so we just sat there by ourselves. And then that night, we met just locals and had some fun, so much fun. I'm like, we got to go home in the morning <laughs> or head back. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so so who all did you call? You've been calling a lot of fans. No, we called you back first tonight. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? This is. A... I didn't win the favorite fan. I didn't win the biggest fan contest. Did I? Oh, you're all I mean, the biggest so fans. One of ours. many. One of many. <laughs> yes, I'd say you're right up there. That's for sure. Oh, good. I know because I was telling Jeff. I go. I don't. I said I didn't know what to say. I said even if you called me back, I said I don't know like, what I'd actually say. I'm a chatterbug, by the way. If you haven't forgotten, we just that, we just really <laughs> shooting the shit. We love it. Yeah. We know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a new yeah. segment for us. I don't know how we came up with it, but it's been pretty fun. We're, we're not necessarily scoring every time, but, oh, the time, sure. <laughs> but the times we do get through, we have a blast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just fun to connect with everybody and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I'm trying to think what the episode, like, say, I, I did find the, your Facebook page, the, you know, the Cabin Master um, at the page, and then you'll show, like, we're kind of a few weeks behind because we'll watch other stuff, and, and uh, when your show it goes, shows, you're like, oh, the recaps or something, and I'll say, yeah. oh, I don't want to look, look at it yet. Cause I wanna <laughs> spoiler <show."> alert. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 spoiler alert. Yeah. I just watched last night the one you did, the um, the college kids camp oh, up yeah. there that you did. That was nice. Yeah, yeah you, re- you are a couple of weeks behind, Pam. <laughs> yeah, 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 just a couple. Yeah. And then, then I, like I said, I like to stretch it out because yeah, Jeff and I both watch it together. Give her a break. Give her a break. She had surgery. <laughs> I know. I, I know. Give me a break. Yeah, I'm watching right now. It's a really special 700 Sunday. <laughs> no, no. I just want to tell our fans because they'll be like, well, what's going on? You know, like, we'll be answering what's that question. That? Oh, because there was a new episode the other night, but you're, you're, you have an, another one to come. But our okay, fans yeah. are always yep. like, well, how do you watch this? How do you watch? Like, yeah. People, oh, yeah. Are, people are I, rabid uh, about the Cabin Masters. Oh, yeah. The other night when I was at the, I think it was the cabin, the camp, the college one, the uh, 
um, Dixie broke the window and he was like opening it up and it broke. He goes, oh, yes. not supposed to do that. And I told Jeff, I go, right. That's Ryan's job to break the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we always get a kick out. I, I laugh my head off at you, Ryan, cause you're always having stupid helmets on and do, just being goofy. And yeah. So yep. You're entertaining. We do too. We <laughs> yeah, do too. You gotta have fun. <laughs> we do too. I know that's, that's what's funny. And I always tell Jeff, I go, I'd like, they're, they're the kind of guys I'd like to sit around and have a beer with. He goes, Oh yeah, for sure. So I got to have a few with the, like I said, the locals out there, but you know what it was? So we- yeah. I think a long time ago, I realized I'm not going to be the best looking. I'm not going to be the smartest. <laughs> I might as well be the funniest one around. <laughs> there you go. Funny is always good. <laughs> it always works for us. It is. Oh, yeah. it well, is. well Pam, funny. thank you so much for answering. Yes, thank you for picking up oh, this time. <laughs> oh, me too. I'm glad. Like I said, I almost didn't because it says 207, and then it just had my, my text message that replied underneath it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, well, thanks for calling back, and I'll continue to watch. I just love the show. Like I said, the scenery, I love the views. That's why I wanted to come out to, mostly, too, just to see. It's just such a pretty area. But there's a lot more trees. I like it here in Wisconsin. There's a little more rolling hills. Interesting. <laughs> but you have a lot. Yeah. Of, it was very pretty out we there. We do have a lot I'll of trees. Bring a chainsaw next time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. I'll definitely uh, come back again. And then and then we were at, um, at the real quick, at the shed, and we met the, that last night there. We met the lady, a girl that works for the um, state, of, uh, state of Wisconsin, state of Maine, the tourism department. I'm like, oh, and she was going to we were going to go with her somewhere else, but then they went. So, but anyway, she got my address. She sent me all kinds of oh, loot awesome. from Maine. Very Cute nice. Little, like, yeah, a, a, a goodie package of awesome. like this little Maine pillow with the sense of pine and just all kinds of stuff and magnets and a, a beer bottle opener. And I'm like, oh my gosh, a little bat. It just, I, mean, I thought it was the sweetest thing she did. That's awesome. So, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. So you got a very nice date. Great. People that work there. Well, so here's, anyway, I suppose I can let you go. Yeah, okay. here's to a speedy recovery. Yes. Thank you very much. And it's it's all good now because that I talked to you guys. Good, Aww. good, good. And hopefully, uh, good, yeah, good. hopefully we'll see you in Maine again soon. Yeah, yeah. I'll look you up again. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Pam. Thank you guys for calling. Bye. See ya. That was a success. That raised our <laughs> average quite a bit. <laughs> we could have talked to Pam all day. I know. I know. That was a good one. When we were talking, I was kind of thinking, you know, we tried to do like the professional thing and fix people's problems and have people come in with these like, real technological <laughs> answers and what we do for a living. And we just want to talk. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Well, we do have a few technical technical questions as well. Hopefully. We do tonight. All right. Let's get to those. No? Okay. <laughs> you say that like you haven't already read them because I know that you have. I haven't read them yet. I didn't look at them today. I swear. Ryan hasn't read them. I didn't look at them. Dad. I'm going in blind. I'll close my eyes. Okay, good. Ready? Um, this one is from uh, Diane. Do you, you're reading it as. Should I have read them? No. Do you ever consult with architects on your project <laughs> or do you all do all of the design yourself? Funny that this is all coming back around because. John Beaupre, we were talking about AOEC yeah. episode coming up, and we actually worked with an architect on that project. Mm-hmm. But normally, no. We don't. No. Normally, it's just idea. Normally, there's no plan that we get going. Yeah, normally, well, I mean, let's think Travis Mills. Architect. We had a set of plans. The AOEC, Adaptive Outdoor Education Center, we have a set of plans. There's been a couple more. There's been, yeah, one or two more. We always change them though, so it doesn't really matter, <laughs> <laughs> right? The best, the best late, and sometimes plans can be a hindrance for us because you kind of, you know, with these cabins, you never know what you're going to find, and if you get too locked into a certain way of looking at it, it doesn't really allow you to work with what you have. And with a set of that plans, makes sense. yeah, with a set of plans, like you can't. All right, budgets, we're out of budget. Like we got to look ahead. Like how much budget we have left? Where are we going to? Where's a good ending point? Like yeah. It's really not feasible for cabins, but it's good to have kind of a a vision. You know, I think mm-hmm. it helps with vision if some camp owners are more, you know. Even the one we just gave back the other day, he gave us a set of plans. We did nothing like it. <laughs> that's not that's not true. That's and he, not was, true. And he was very excited. <laughs> you know, and like, but like he said, it's like you saw something. It it's it's like. It's almost doing like archaeology and demo and like just figuring out like the camp tells us what it can do. We said that a million times. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We, you know, we get an idea of what they're looking for and then try and fit that in the best way possible. And literally you might go to Martin's or, or Hammond's and get a deal on something that changes the project. 
Right. You might get these crazy cool beams that cost something like, well, we're going that way. You might just get a certain set of siding that has to go a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're very organic. Oh, right. nice. Organic planning. Yeah. That's us. <laughs> Nailed that question. Give me another one. Maggie. Sure. All righty. This question is from Michael Street. When you do a steel roof, why do you put the roof screws in the valley of the steel, not on the peaks of the steel? Okay, so we must be talking about when we do the cap. I think screw down, right? Yeah. So there's t different types of steel roofs. If we sub it out to our friends of Fowlers, it's standing seam. Yes. And those have clips. They bend the panels, and it, you don't see the fasteners. No fast. Hidden fasteners. Hidden fasteners. Now, we ourselves, which is the most cost-effective, do screw down yes. metal roof. And he, I think he's asking why, oh, yeah. on the ridges, why you don't put the screw in the top of the ridge. Before we put, okay, before we put the cap on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's an easy one. What? That's easy. Why? Because when we, when we, you lay the panels out first, right? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. You don't put the top screw in because when you put the cap down, you screw through both. No, he's talking, I think he's talking about a flat on the flat versus on the ridge, right? So you know how it's got the bump? Yeah. That's what I that's what I interpret. Why don't why do we put it there and not here? So that it Be goes through. Because if roof. it's a 12 inch cap. No, no, no. Even on the even on the lower part of the panel. Ryan's not understanding. Oh, 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 you mean on the whole panel. The whole panel. Oh. Because it, right? it'll it'll dimple and, and and stuff, right? I think so. Yeah. Because you know nine times out of ten we have to run strapping depending on what the was there before, yep. and you don't want any voids there. You because those they have a rubber flange in the screw. Yeah, and so yeah, so right now we're folding a piece of paper to make it look like it's got a bump up. And imagine if you put a screw through the ridge, what happens to the panel? Well, right, it squishes the sides up. But it, if you screw, if you screw down, that ridge doesn't move, and there is some flex. You know, everything expands and contracts in cold weather versus warm weather, and also. Like Ryan was saying, the screws have a gasket, a rubber gasket on the right under the top of the head. And that is what helps make it watertight. Whereas if you screw down through the top of that ridge, it doesn't really make a good make a dimple. Yeah. Can... And really, to be honest, that's what the 10 guys that we saw do it before did. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. how they've always done it. Yeah, no, that's how it's that's how it's done. I love that that's a question. Like they that's the detail that someone sees. Like yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Hopefully that answers it for you. Uh, yeah, sure. All right, Maggie's in. <laughs> She's in. So next group you do, Maggie. I hope it's none ever. <laughs> You're always gonna need a roof over your head, and, and, we're, and we're here to provide I that for you. Won't be doing it. Someone else can do that for me. All right. All right. Yeah. Are we on? Was there another question? Are we on the next no, segment? No, we're done with questions for the day. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. Are you gonna introduce my segment, or are you just gonna let me do it? My last, last time you yelled at me. Oh, I knew there was something <laughs> going on here. I didn't I did do a, anything. You yelled at me. Did not. Taylor, that was a little intense, huh? That's a standoff. I was like, should I say something? All right. So, so we're on to main <laughs> trivia questions. Last week's trivia question. Uh -huh. This is very organic. <laughs> Oh, right. To a botanist, what is special about Crystal Bog in Southern Arista County? It has a type of lady slipper. No. I mean, it might. I don't know. Um, to a botanist. Salt water. Chris. What would that have to do with botany? I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. Couldn't have spent to a carpenter. Um, would you like the answer? Yes. It has 18 rare plant species are found there. I mean, I was on the right yeah. track. I give him half a point for that. No, I don't. And I, make rules. I get an 18th of a point because yep. one of those yep. rare plants would is be a lady, lady slipper. You have no idea if that's 18th true. 18th of a point. Thank you, you don't know that that's true. I'm good. I second it. What's the bog? <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> crystal. <laughs> There's no chance that's correct. <laughs> Why do they name it rare plant bog instead of crystal bog? It's not like it's like crystal. <laughs> I'm going to ask you the next question. All right. We need to ask these to our abilities. Um, 
this one seems like it might be to your ability. <laughs> um, what governor established the state's first bird day and be kind to animals week? All right. If you know the answer and you are the first person with the correct answer to podcast at maincabinmasters.com, you're going to live in infamy. Yeah. And you might just get a gift sent to us. Yeah. And Maggie might have some. Uh... Maggie will give you a smile, not what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to send us your project pointers and mate at podcast at maincabinmasters.com. Thank you for all the uh, questions so far. Keep them coming. Thank you to our Fona fans. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, John Beaupre. Thank you, John. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, Nelma, Hero Media Network, and Kennebec Savings Bank. And From the Woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.